Is there ever a bad time to talk about articling? Or perhaps I should ask the inverse. Is there ever a good time to talk about articling positions? If you're somewhere in law school, one, two, or three L, and you're wondering about what the best approach you can bring to finding your articles, then keep on watching. Because in this video, we'll discuss not just that from my perspective, but also I'll be sharing some observations I made from my friends, now colleagues, that found articling positions that made the most sense for them. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Pam Matani. I'm a lawyer and the founder here at Graphene Business Law, a business law firm where we serve as clients throughout Ontario, and we do so virtually. Talking to law students and about law school topics is a personal passion of mine, so I always dedicate you know, some time each week to putting together these videos because I know what it's like, I know where you're at, been there, done that. And to be honest, every video I put out is a topic that I wish I had that safe space and that safe person to talk to during my law school years, which I didn't. And in putting this video, if one less person feels like that, then these videos have accomplished their job. Now, today's question about articles is not necessarily specific tips and tricks on how to find articles, but it's a big picture approach to how to find, how to go about looking for the best articling positions for you. I think that's a good way to say it. And I also I'll emphasize why that's a good topic to think about because you're only ever gonna find the best of what you're looking for, okay? Now, when it comes to articling, I felt this video was really important to put out as well because in law school settings, I feel that there's a certain push to article in certain environments. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Disclaimer, you know, I myself completed my articles on Bay Street at a very strong, at a very strong commercial litigation shop, um, AKA business law firm that litigated. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, Lexford rank firm, like one that was strong all the way. And I have so much respect for my mentors, uh, you know, I, I wish I'd done a better job of articulating that sometimes, but um, you learn and you go. And, um, you know, maybe these videos are a part of paying forward to the universe. What I wish I could have, you know, done at that time by way of, you know, gratitude and thankfulness and, and just sharing, you know, not to sound whatever, but sharing the good vibes. Okay. So uh, I did want to get that out of the way, but. With articling positions, because of that focus in law school to find a certain kind of, to find a placement in a certain kind of firm setting, I feel that, you know, th there's more, there's a little bit more we can be talking about, okay? Especially for students that might not have lawyers in their family, they might not have somebody to tap on the shoulder and say, hey, tell me more, what's behind the curtain, okay? One... And I'll walk you here through different approaches I've seen from either friends at the time or from colleagues, sometimes guest speakers. One of these tips is from a really successful uh, business lawyer, actually, who ended up coming as a guest speaker when I was in my third year at Osgood Hall. But the first strategy I'll share in terms of finding articles, there's the approach of, and this might sound taboo in a profession that is so high strung, but there's that approach of getting going about your articles in the least stressful way possible. The setting that I know of that can provide that and be very cautious, I'm not commenting on the quality of articling experience in the setting in any way. I'm commenting about the path to get to that setting, okay? That's the LPP program. The school used to be called Ryerson, now it's Toronto Metropolitan, okay? But to get to the LPP, I'm not sure if there is an application required in so far as like a skill testing application or if you just apply and are guaranteed a spot in that program. I know once you get to the program, there is, you know, they're interviewing and there is work to be done in getting a placement. But I know that to get to the program, I don't think that's the most arduous process. And I don't want to put anything out there that's not true. But I remember friends in the program telling me something about how the program at the LPP guarantees you articling. Now, there might be a little asterisk next to that guarantees. Maybe it's not an official guarantee, but it might be an observational guarantee and that everybody that went through the program found an articling position. Now, <coughs> 
I've been putting a lot of cough breaks in these videos recently. <laughs> it's uh, February in Canada. I had one friend in law school. She was pregnant. Okay, she she became pregnant, I think around graduation time. Uh, so and or a few months prior, but she knew she was pregnant for sure around graduation time, and that the pregnancy was going well. It was gonna, you know, it was looking like it was gonna, you know, t turn into the real thing. And I remember her telling me when I asked her, "What are you gonna do about her articles?" And she said, I don't want the stress of finding an article position to impact my child in any way at that time of fetus and, you know, the development. And she said, so I'm going to do the LPP. I'm not even going to bother applying or interviewing or anything else at any firms, you know, at any of these settings that could be causing her some type of stress. And that was it. And that was her journey. And you know what? She did just that. She went to the LPP. She, of course, you know, passed it, graduated, whatever the terminology is for that program. If you're in Ontario and you're watching this video, you're going to know very well what the LPP placement is. You're going to know what I'm talking about. And uh, she did that. And after that, she worked at a private firm for a year or two. And now she has her own shop. And that was, you know, that's the whole story. You're allowed to choose options that are less stressful than others. And again, be very careful to note that I'm not commenting on quality. I'm not saying this is an easier option, a dumber option, a less respectable option. None of them. None of that. To my knowledge, there's some very strong employers at the LPP program. But for what it's worth, it's less stressful getting there just by virtue of the fact that, you know, if you take a more conventional route, you could be interviewing for articling like every single week of law school. Okay. I had a lot of, you know, weeks like that. And that's pure stress. Delete all of that and show up to the LPP. You're gonna have stress once you get there, but so did all the rest of us once we got to our articling placement. But in the meanwhile, you've cut out all the middleman stress of, you know, during 3L, trying to find articles. Because you've kind of fixed your brain on that setting of, I'm gonna do my articles at the LPP point blank period, okay? You're allowed to choose words for yourself that are less stressful, that match better with your other life priorities, that match better with your mental health, that match better with where you're at right now in life. You're allowed to do that, okay? Despite the focus, like I said, in law school being mainly on one type of article and placement. Now, the second strategy, the first being, you know, go the least stressful route possible. The second strategy, this was shared I'm not going to give anybody's names. I never do in these videos. But there was a guest speaker that came during my third year of law school. He actually had his own firm as well, commercial litigation as well. And um, he was somebody that I looked to as really successful. So I think that says something. You know, this was, it wasn't like a kid that had opened up his own firm, you know, a few months ago, you know, and he wanted the free exposure. This practitioner had been in business for, you know, 10 to 20 years. So serious, serious guy. And I asked him, I don't remember if I asked him during the whole Q&A or if I asked him, you know, privately after, I said, you know, what, where did you article? Like, what did you care about when you articled? Obviously, he didn't have the LPP option at his time. That's a fairly recent option in Ontario. He said, I articled, <coughs> I applied everywhere, he said, without care for area of practice. And I articled at the first firm that hired me. I didn't give a damn about their area of practice. I didn't want to be in their area of practice, but I just wanted my passport stamped in terms of, you know, articles complete. And these guys said they were going to give it to me. I took the passport. I knew one day out, you know, one day after getting that passport, I'd start my own shop. So what did I care anyways? Not my words, his. But, you know, I would venture to say that that is, is a good strategy if you're in, if you're on that boat, right? Like every strategy is good for you if you fit the bill, if you're in that setting. There is no one size fits all strategy. And that can sometimes be, you know, perhaps the danger of what the one type of setting that law school pumps you to idealize, right? And that's what this guy did. I think he articled in, oh God, he was an engineer going to law school. And <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm gonna have to get, go off of memory, but I think it was, it wasn't even one of the most like popular areas of law, you know, business law, criminal law, personal injury. I think he articled in like education law or something like that, but he didn't care. He knew he wasn't gonna stick around. He knew that wasn't his life. That was just like show up to work for 10 months, get the articling pass, move on. And that's what he did. And that's what you can do too. 
um, what, what do I have here? A third focus I have or a third strategy I have in terms of how to find your articles is figuring out that area of practice that matters to you the most, okay? And I'll say that's the strategy I used. I mean, for somebody whose firm slogan is all business all the time, here for us is Rafi and Business Law, maybe it's not a surprise that I truly have been all business all the time. And, uh, you know, I remember telling friends in law school, like, if I can't do business law, I'm not going to do law. And um, because this is the one thing I want. So from that perspective, what kind of firms do you think I apply to? Business law firms. And whoever, you know, whoever answered the call was who, who I went with, although I will qualify that statement by saying that I accepted the third or fourth offer given to me. I did not accept the first offer that was made to me because I had, you know, certain criteria that I was looking for within that business law world. But, um, but I chose in that spirit of you're not going to get what you don't look for. I chose to look for a business law focus at the firm I ended up articling at. And that's what happened. And you're allowed to make that choice. And sometimes you're kind of twisted into that choice if you are into a kind of area of law that is more niche. Some that come to the came, you know, to mind right off the bat, animal rights law, I think is still a little bit in the niche world. Some types of entertainment law or, you know, sports law could still be a little bit in the niche world. Although I know the big firms like to take, you know, as much of a bite from any area of practice they can, you know, get their, if it's a bite, I guess, teeth on. But it just so happens that there's still some areas of practice that those guys that kind of started the shop, those guys and girls that kind of started that wave of practice are still going to be the best place to practice at. And that's usually their small shops. So if it's an area of practice that you're focused on, you're allowed to go this third route as well. The fourth route. Okay. Um, the, the fourth way you can go about it. If you're looking as to what kind of experience, the breadth to your experience, I would suggest you gear your focus, for example, to smaller law firms as opposed to bigger. At larger law firms, the consensus seems to be, especially during articles, especially during junior years, that you're going to only see this very small piece of the puzzle for a very long time. And the best you can hope for is to be the best at rubber stamping that piece of the puzzle. But at a smaller shop, not only are you going to see the whole agreement from day one, I know I did, you're also going to see the practice of running a law firm, the business of running a law firm. And those are conversations that you simply would not be privy to in certain settings. So if you're looking for depth to experience, well, cater your search of articling positions to firms that can genuinely provide you that. My, so that would have been <laughs> first, second, third, fourth. My fifth suggestion is of course the conventional one of law firm setting, okay? And this one, I'm just saying for the purpose of having a comprehensive list so that you know I did give thought to everything and it goes without saying, but I still have to put it out there so that somebody's not like, oh, you forgot this or why did you forget this? If you want to article at a big firm, please apply to the big firms, right? It goes without saying, you don't need to watch this video to learn that. If you want to article at a mid-sized firm, you know, apply to the mid-sized firms. If you want to article in-house, apply in-house. If you only want to work with government, only apply to the government, right? Like you're allowed to make those choices as well. You are allowed to choose whatever it is you want to choose. And my sixth, my sixth sort of what to look for here is might be more something that ends up finding you in the sense of location. It's law school. There's students there from all different life paths. If you are coming at it from the perspective of, you know, you have a family member that needs your care in a really small town in Ontario. You, you know, for mental health reasons, want to be around a certain somebody yourself in a certain town and, you know, or city in Ontario. If you know the loc if you are location bound, then you are, of course, going to be looking for positions in that location. And please know that that's okay. If that's what you choose in this moment of time, if you choose not to be on Bay Street on your articles, it in no way means you can never come back to Bay Street. You can in fact come back and have your own firm on Bay Street or your own company with your in-house lawyers that you hire on Bay Street. You can do it all. 
but if for what right here right now matters is that you know to keep this in check you need to be in a certain sitting a city or town or village or hamlet whatever in ontario do that that's okay you're allowed to do that okay and i said you know i provided all of these suggestions because genuinely there is such a you know lack of ability to breathe freely in law school when it comes to where to look for articling there's a really heavy hand forcing students i felt to look a certain way and that might be a great way for some but it just simply avoids the reality for all of the other reasons that i've given here right like i talked about scenarios where this girl was pregnant in law school and was going to be heavily pregnant going into articles i talked about a scenario here where you know the guy that was an engineer he by the way you know was also an international <laughs> an international guy in the sense that you know he wasn't born in Canada I don't even know if he was you know Canadian citizen attending law school like he was very new to the country and for a lot of reasons it suited him and just his mentality and his mindset to get his articles done literally anywhere that would hire him okay that would stamp his passport first there were people in law school I remember I went to law school with a guy, I think he had to like donate, you know, a kidney or something to, to his sick father, like, you know, there, and you know, he had to go back to his hometown for that. Like there are so many life scenarios outside of just showing up to firms on one street in one city in Ontario, okay? And um, on top of it all, you might be watching this video and <laughs> as I think about it, not even be looking to article in Ontario and that's fine too. So I'll leave this video there. Student inquiries are welcome anytime here at Graphene. You can of course accomplish that either by commenting on the video down below or emailing us info at graphenebusinesslaw.ca. Thank you for watching.